Howdy pal guys and gals, welcome back to another pal video. Today we're going to be going over the ins and outs of pal husbandry, not just because it's kinky, but because it's useful. That's right, breeding your pals is useful for passing down those passive traits and also getting pals that are maybe a little bit harder to get. So in this video, we're going to go over the raunchy details on how to get started and how to find out what breeds with what to get you what type of pal. Let's get started. Now, in order to breed your pals, you need to give them a nice hot love nest. And at level 19, you can unlock the breeding farm. That's just one piece of the puzzle, that hookup spot. Next, in order to get those juices flowing, you gotta give them some cake. I don't know why cake, but just cake. Now to make this aphrodisiac cake, you need flour, red berries, milk, egg, and honey. Now for flour, you'll need to make a plantation for wheat. Wheat is unlocked at level 15, but Danasm can drop the wheat seeds when you capture them. Also, you can butcher them for more. And if you didn't know this little hot tip, there's a little button here. Once you capture one, you get access to the habitat area and you can see where they're at whenever they spawn. So you don't have to run around the map guessing. Also, there's a day and night function too. So it's pretty, pretty useful. And they do spawn right in that uh, beginning area. Now, obviously by this point in the game, you probably already know that red berries can be made in a berry plantation. So you have that going. For the milk, egg, and honey, those three can be gathered at the ranch. Obviously, if you have a chicken, they'll drop the eggs for you. You'll need a cow, the mazarina, and then also the bee guard, wherever the, there he is, there's the bee guard. The mazarina can be found here on the map. For context, this is the beginning area. And the bee guard can be found in this big region. For context, this is the starting area. Now, gathering the materials for this cake isn't the hard part, it's cooking it. It takes forever to cook one. This is a level three uh, fire guy and it's just taking him forever just to get that one cooking. So I recommend having multiple pots going, have multiple fire guys cooking, just though you always have more coming down the, the pipeline. Now with our cakes in hand and our love nest made, we're gonna drop off these cakes in this little box. And don't worry, once the cakes go in, they do not spoil. They'll just sit there forever. <laughs> that would be the worst day if they start spoiling. You lose all these expensive cakes. Now let's introduce our love birds, Celeray and our socks. Ah, oh, look at that happy couple. Let me just go ahead and uh, get them into the right position. Come here, you little fella. There you go. Throw them on and boom. He's set there. Where'd the other one go? Don't run from me. No, oh, don't don't you run. I'm gonna get you. Come here, little bugger. I know you don't want to, but it's gonna, you don't have a choice in the matter, actually. There you go. Now love each other. And just like that, they're breeding. Love is blossoming between the two pals. If you have trouble uh, hooking them up in this place, you may have to delete this and rebuild it. Sometimes it happens, but at least you can fix it. Now the love is a blossoming. We're gonna wait for that. Once they uh, get that full bar up, they will eat a cake and pop out a baby. And while that is happening, it is perfect time to tell you why we're bothering with this. So there are two major reasons why you want to breed your pals. One is to get unique pals that may be hard to get um, or you just want more of. Not only get unique pals, but also get pals with strong passive traits. Hey, editing Travis here. I thought I would include a list of some of the better passive skills for when you're catching a whole bunch of pals so you can help uh, breed them together to get the right stats on the right pals. Uh, for defense, we got Burly Body. Uh, Lucky's good for work speed and or attack. Nimble Runner and Swift for movement speed. Ferocious Musclehead Hooligan for attack up. Serious Artisan and Work Slave for that work speed. And then of course Legend, which you get those from Legendary Pals and you have to breed them together with other things to get them off of that. Uh, but those are some of the, the better ones. All right, now back to the video, bye. So we have a Celeray right here. It's got Musclehead as its passive attribute. And I have um, Arsox here with Runner and Blood of the Dragon. Now, there is a high chance that all that will go on to its baby. It's not guaranteed. There's a lot of RNG. I've had uh, two fully four stacked passive traits on both pals, and it got random other things when it was born. But by breeding up your pals, you can get a pal that has really good passive traits. Now, this, my Arsox isn't done yet, but right now it has Runner and Swift on it, making it very fast compared to the, the base R socks. And in fact, let's do a take a look. So the base R socks walking speed is about this and its running speed is about right there. But with mine who has Swift and uh, runner on it, it's walking speed is that it's just so much faster and running so much quicker, making it so much easier to run around the map. Now, my goal is to get some like muscle head and get some other kind of uh, attack up on this guy. Um, it's going to take a while, of course, but that's the overall goal with 
breeding is it's going to take a while to get what you want where you want it. Let's check on our lovebirds. Oh, they're almost done. Well, before they finish up, let's talk about how breeding uh, gets new pals. So basically every pal has a breeding value. Uh, whenever you breed two pals together, the values are added together. And then that whatever number is close to is the pal that you'll get. Uh, oh, they just had a baby. Oh, congratulations. And so uh, when this guy and this guy breeding values are added, we got a large scorching egg. And if we breed it, there we go we get something more unique. You would imagine that it could be one or the other, but nope, it's a kit soon. Imagine that with runner. So he didn't get all of their stats. I was hoping to get um, runner and then also muscle head, uh, but it got runners, which is not a bad one to start off with. And so there are so many different possibilities for pals adding each other's stats together uh, when it comes to their breeding value. There's no way for you to really know how to breed everything together. That's why I have included at the top of the description a Reddit link to someone who's already data mined all this stuff out for you. So you can go look it up. That's how I know that those two will add it, make a kit soon. So that's why I know when I combine a Hell's of Fire with what do you think could be combined with the Hell's of Fire to make a kit soon? Oh, that's right, a lamp ball. It makes complete sense. No. Uh, but the breeding values, that's what it will equal. What's nice about this is that uh, something like a lamp ball, which is just you everywhere, you can get a whole bunch of them and also lucky pretty easily and breed these together until you get a um, lamp ball that has four good golden stats. Uh, and then you can breed it with a Hell's Fire, preferably one that doesn't have anything or has like for this one is a runner, which is fine uh, to give you a kitsune that has the hopefully most ideal stats. Now, all this will take a while. So you're going to have to get a lot of cakes and be patient and turn a lot of them into, uh, well, sell a lot of these or, um, I don't know, maybe send them out to uh, where old Yeller is uh, because you're going to be getting a lot of extra things. I think it went through about 20 or 30 um, of these guys to try to get some uh, of so to get my arc socks to actually have running and swift and um, stuff like that. So the link at the top of the description is the Reddit post where I found uh, all the combinations of all the pals that you will need. So what's nice about it is it has a lot of different features in it. So for example, if I wanted to make a fingal finglope, um, I would need, let's see, if I wanted had the first parent as R socks, it tells me all the things I'll need for the second one. Uh, Celeray. If I wanted a, I don't know, if I put a chickpea, and then here are the other things I would need to actually make this child. Also, it has all the combos on a, on a different page to show you all the different things you can make, uh, what combines into what. Also, it has a section about the unique combos, the ones that can only be obtained by uh, combining two different things. Like, for example, Relaxic Relaxosaurus Ret Lux uh, is Relaxosaurus plus a Spark It. These are only ways to obtain these types of pals. It's a very useful resource if you're going to try to get really heavy into breeding. Oh, we have another one already um, because it can be complicated to try to figure this out on your own. So now we have another Kitsune and this one and this Kitsune that we just made only has blood of the dragon. So it's not guaranteed that you're going to get um, the uh, passive stats for both parents on every piece of the uh, child. Uh, it's just a chance that you're going to get it. So you're going to need once again, lots of lots of cakes. So I hope you enjoy watching your pals breed over and over again. I know I do. Uh, and if you like what you saw, don't forget to hit me with a like. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe until later. I'll see you next time. Bye. Breed harder. Daddy needs a good baby.